Hi friends, today I am painting those magnolias that I shared with you, I believe yesterday. And uh, I thought, you know, I'd really like to paint those. I have painted magnolias in the past for a couple commissions and I thought that might be fun. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do my little swatch first so I can see the colors. And I am using, today I'm actually using my number six, a round Princeton brush, just for something a little different. Let me get my two containers of water here, one to wash, one to rinse. I've got my paper towel setting here and my palette. And let's go ahead and create our swatches. The magnolia we have around here are all this beautiful magenta color. Surprise, surprise. I'm just going to start as I always do in these, these little kits I sell. And you can grab this and get the swatches. I always hate repeating myself in college. I would have loved these as a reference. And then I just keep adding water to get that lighter value, just like that. So I start with the darkest value, which is more pigment. And as I pull it out, I just keep adding a little bit of water and I see where I can get the lightest value. And the lightest value I'm going to use up in the tips of the petals, because out here, that's how they look. They're very bright pink down in here. And then as they get to the top, they turn this beautiful, just white color. And that's how I'm going to get it. Then I'm going to use probably some of this gold green, which I love. You see me use that a lot. It's kind of like a brown. The other thing I will do a lot of times is just add some of my Quin Magenta to my green, and that's a pretty color as well. And this I'll use just for the stem. Here's the darkest value of that. And now I just dip in to my water tap off a bit and start pulling it out, add a little bit more water until I get very light. And there's the color values, darker value to the lighter value just by adding water. And it gives me a good idea of the colors I can achieve. The other color I use quite often is I mix my olive, and my sap green together. I actually create a lot of greens. As I said, I always, for the dark spots, I always add in whatever color flower, and that I, I like that. Here's the dark value. And you get a little bit more paint to really get that dark value. There we go. And now I start rinsing my brush, just barely scraping it off. And I go back in and I start pulling out and getting lighter and lighter till I've got a very light value of that green. Okay, I think that's really basically gonna be the colors that I use. Um, I'm, don't think there's another, I think I'm gonna stick with those three colors. And then the brush strokes that I'll be using for the petals will be a two stroke. So two C's or a compound stroke where I'll be going from, let's get some of this pink, creating these C's, thin using the tip of my brush, light pressure, pushing down more and more and more, and coming around like that. 
point, press and come down. Just like that. Okay, I might dab off my brush a bit. If I've got any puddling, we wanna pick that up. And then while this is still kind of wet in the bottom, I'm going to go in and dab in that darker value of that color because like I said, these magnolias here have a real deep magenta at the bottom like this. And I can use that dabbing and pulling that you see me use a lot and just going in it and pulling it upwards like that. Okay. Might even come in with a real thin lines at the top. We'll see. And there's the perfect magnolia petal. Now I'm going to go in on each petal while it's wet with my green. If you think you have too much water on there, just tap it. And I'm going to go in with it and let it spread because that is my thing. I love, love, love that. So it spread in there. And then of course these, these magnolia branches are quite funky and wonky. The other thing I noticed they had, which you can practice with your brush, is these little nubby pieces, which I'm assuming are gonna be new little buds coming out. So there you go. And we'll play more with the petals, but for right now, I would practice on your practice sheet a very light value and just creating these petal shapes. So point, press, oop, see I didn't have enough water on my brush. Point, press, point, press. And then you can use the tip just like that. Let's do that again, maybe a side one. Point, press, maybe just like that. Maybe you just need a half of one. Okay, and I notice at the tip of these petals, they all kind of go into this almost a little funnel shape here. When they all join up, they go into almost a funnel shape. And then of course going in and tapping in with some of that darker color at the base. All righty. For the uh, branches here, you could practice that using the tip of your brush. And I would even hold up a little higher on the brush so you can get a little bit more play and just practice making that stem, that branch, just like that. The ones here had some funny angles. So just practice that. I find I can be a little looser with my brush strokes if I hold farther back on the brush versus up here closer to the ferrule. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and sketch out our magnolias. And I was running out of paper, so I started going through some old paper and I found this one, which I hadn't even used. It's a Grumbacher and it's the 140 pound cold press. And I actually was kind of surprised I'd never used it because it's very heavy. It's got a great texture. I think I'm really gonna like it. So I was kind of happy to find that. I'm going to start out first sketching it. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to be following this sketch tutorial that I shared uh, recently. And I'll do it in pencil here. 
Let's start with our middle, our center petal coming out like this. Again, they all kind of come into this funnel and the base of the flower is going to be right here. So all your petals want to be pointing back towards that. And then let's create, let's do this too before I get too far, because this really helped me when I was first sketching flowers, is let's create a very light pencil circle, okay? Like that. We're kind of looking at the flower from the side. The bottom of the circle is the base, or where the ovary is contained. And so all of our petals are going to be within this circle. Now what I would do, typically what I do, is I create lines very lightly, coming back and pointing to the circle. So maybe right here, like this. And then that gives me some guidelines of my petals to follow that outline. Now since I made that a little bigger, Let's go ahead and extend this to the top of that circle. This pencil I'm using, by the way, I've used before and shared. I really like these. They're the black wings, and what I like about them is this little eraser because it's very thin. The pencil color is a good color. It's not too dark, but it can go dark if you press harder. And these little erasers are replaceable and they're very small, so I like that. It can get into some small areas. Back to our petal here, I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger. And there's our first petal. The second petal, I'm going to go from the side and have it curve around. Now, as long as it's coming back to the base, it's gonna be in the right direction. It's going to look in the right perspective. Let's draw the other side petal here. I'm trying to get my hand out of the way for you. Like this. And then it comes down. So see, I dropped down, but as long as I came up and brought the base of the petal pointing towards this, it looks in perspective. Now I'm going to create another one in the back here. I'm going to start here. Here's my line. So I want to make sure my petal is facing the center. I'm going to come out. bring it around like that okay here's another one here's my guideline so i want to make sure my petal is following that guideline like that all right so they're all facing back to the center here now the bottom of these tends to come in that little funnel shape. And a lot of times they have like a little sepal here coming out or a little leaf. And the branches are quite curved. They're, they're pretty hefty. They're not a real uh, delicate branch that I could see. I, I felt like they were pretty strong and very, very woodsy looking. Okay. From here, I'm going to create um, another magnolia coming out over here. That's going to be a little bit more closed. So we're going to start first with the shape. We're looking at it from the side and it's kind of closed like this. All right, so we're going to start with our circle. I'm going to start with my circle, like so. Very light pencil. 
like that. And then at the base of that is that little funnel and the little pod. From here, I can bring lines out for my petals so I can follow those lines. All right, I could even put one tucked in the back here as long as it's facing down towards the base of my flower like this. So again, I'm going to start with this middle leaf like I did on this one. Coming out here, there's my center petal. And it comes in and gets very thin right here. Now I'm going to create my second petal and I want to make sure it follows this guideline. Like that. Okay. And then one on the other side here. I'm actually going to bring this in front of that front one. and come down. All the petals are facing towards the center. Now I'll add in maybe one in the back here, following this line, like that. Another one here. All of them facing back. Now let's go in and just erase some of these lines our guidelines like that. This is why I like this eraser. It's really thin and can get in those little spaces. So now I've erased these lines. There we go. And I've got this beautiful little bud here. I'm going to bring this in as well and kind of angle that branch because it seemed to be a common thing with these, just like that. And then I think right here, let's just do a little bud coming off. Kind of the little sepal, like so. And the branches have these, I, I want to say they must be little sprouts coming up that are going to be new flowers. So let's add those in here and there. They were coming off the side like this. And maybe this has some of those sepals coming off, like so. Okay, let's erase this circle. So I hope that was helpful. I, I found when I do those guidelines, it really helped to keep my petals facing in the right direction. and help me keep the perspective so it didn't look kind of wonky when I was done. So there we go. We've got all our petals drawn. We've got our little bud. We could even add in more buds really, but I like working with three. And then these little veins Again, they follow the shape of the petal and also all come back facing the middle. 
like that. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and start using our paint. And the technique I'm going to be using is you could do a wet and wet hair, but I'm going to use today that pushing and pulling because that's, I just like that technique and I've shown it to you and uh, it seemed like most of you had fun with that as well. So let's make a little well here of our Quinn Magenta. I've had tons and tons of you ask me about this little palette that I use. It's made from Mist Ceramics. She didn't do a lot of them. I had to wait several months to get it. It was a custom order. She's on both Instagram as m.ceramics and I'm sorry, it's m.ister, I-S-T-E-R, ceramics. I'll, I'll put that in the description. And she does have a Etsy page, but she doesn't show these palettes. Uh, they're very, they're special requests. She does mostly little uh, ceramic snails and houses and things like that. So I've got a couple of her palettes and she put these fun little daisies here. Okay, so I'm going to go in with, I, I want to use a very washy first glaze because again, we can always darken. So let's go in with a very light value using the tip of my brush, so very light pressure. And actually, let's start up here so I don't put my hand in it, my arm in it, resting on the side of my hand, holding my brush about a quarter of the way up because I want a little bit of control. And just lightly point, press, and come up, and do that a few times like this. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm going to rinse my brush, gently scrape it on the side, and you can even tap it because you don't want it dripping. And I'm going to go in that and start pushing and pulling. You can dry off your brush just like that. Isn't that beautiful, that transition? Now, while this is still wet, I might go into the bottom with a dark value. and pull it out with the tip of my brush a little. Now, once you get to that point, just leave it. So you kind of feather it out here, okay? There you go. And we're gonna leave that as it is. I'm going to go ahead and go over to my second petal and I'm gonna turn my sheet so my hand isn't in your way and pick up that light value of that Quinn Magenta again, and do the same thing here. Point, press, and I came to a point, point, press, and to a point again. Once I do that, I rinse my brush, I tap off the excess water, and then I start going into this pushing and pulling technique I've shared with you. And you don't even have to bring it all the way to the tip because what I saw with these flowers is a lot of them were all pretty much white at the end. Now, while this is wet, I'm going to go in with my darker value and just tap in and let that blend. You can encourage it a little, just like that if you like, okay? While this is still wet, I want to go in with my green because I like the wet and wet. So I will go into my green here, which is a mixture of olive and sap green. And I'm going to barely touch here. See that? Isn't that pretty? How it blends in there. 
and then we'll come back to that. I love that. That's, again, as you hear me say all the time, just what I adore about watercolors. And here we're leaving white space. So really, really interesting. Let's go into a second petal. We can go into our middle petal here. I'm going to turn my page again so I'm, my hand is not in your way. We will pick up the light value. And the tip of my brush, push down and fan out and draw it up. Do that again, point, press, like that. Point, press, just like that, okay? Now clean my brush, scrape it on the side of my dish, get rid of some of that water by tapping on your towel, and I'm gonna go in with that push and pull technique. Now remember, you can leave, you don't have to pull this all the way up to the top. You can leave some of that white. You can even create a little more if you want by drawing your brush and picking some of that up. While it's damp, I'm going to go in with that darker color and just touch in and start letting it spread. Okay, so there's our third leaf. Now when we, I go into this petal, our third petal I meant, when we go into this petal, I'm going to leave a little bit of white space because I don't want it all to blend in and turn into that blob we all talk about. Let's go in and we'll grab our light color once again and leaving a little tiniest bit of white space between this petal and this one. This one's probably dry. Point, press, and draw up. Pick up a little more paint. Point, press, and draw up, just like that. Okay, so there we go. Let's do the one on the other side. Same technique. Use that light value, meaning more water than paint. And these both are wet, so I'm gonna be very careful not to touch those. Point, press, point, press, just like that. Okay. There we go. And I'm leaving these white spaces now because I don't like a lot of um, hard edges. I'm gonna go in here and just soften these a little bit. That's just my personal preference. I actually am going to leave these. I think those are kind of pretty. And then I'm going to touch in at the tip here with a darker value. There we go. All right, and maybe even get it to spread a little. This one I'm going to leave lighter because it is in the back. So is this one, but I wanted to add some interest and I wanted it to be a little lighter value. I'm actually going to go into this middle one and make it a little darker. So I'm using the tip of my brush and just drawing in some of those little details to darken it a bit, okay? This is still wet, so I'm actually going to use the tip of my brush and do the same with those. Okay, I think that one's pretty good. I could always go in and soften some of these lines if I didn't like these hard lines with a barely damp brush. I'm just kind of touching into them, pushing and pulling, something like that. Dabbing on my paper towel. There you go. I don't want to get too picky in there because then it'll look overworked. All right, let's go into this one down here. 
same technique. We have this light value, more water than paint. And we're starting with the tip, press down and draw up, okay? Pick up some more, press, draw up. And using the tip of my brush, just to kind of move the paint around. Now, while it's wet, again, we go in with that darker value. Okay? Like that. And letting this sit, it'll continue to spread. When I go into the leaf, the petal next to it, remember to leave that little bit of white space. And if you really wanted to, I'm actually okay with this. You could go in with a damp brush, a clean damp brush, and just soften up some of this. Typically, that's kind of what I would do. Something like that. Okay, let's go into the petal next to it. I pick up that light value. And now see, I can tell my brush is really full. It's really fully saturated. I'm going to, to see, even if I hold it up, it would drip. That's way too much. So I'm going to tap it on my paper towel and then point, press, leaving that tiniest bit of white space, point, press, like this. All right, there we go. And I'm actually not going to darken the bottom. I kind of like that it has a different value than the one next to it. And look at even how pretty that little white space is. Let's go into this petal here. So rinse your brush a little. We're using the same color, so you don't have to completely rinse it. Go into your paint, that light value. And let's do this petal over here. Now I can tell again, I've got a little bit too much water. It's very full and round. So I'm going to tap it just to remove a tiny bit. Point, press, point, press, leaving that sliver of white in there because otherwise it would just all blend together into a giant mess. And I am going to soften these edges. The way I do that is wash my brush. You just want it to be damp, not wet. So I tap it on my paper towel and then use that push-pull technique. I'm being really careful to leave white tips on these. I think that's really pretty and, and what I was seeing in these flowers. Let's go ahead and do the back flat, the back petal. Same technique. I might switch up the value a little, so maybe make it a tiny, ooh, that is a new paint, so it's quite wet. I'm used to my drier paints. I just added more of that, so it's quite wet. Okay, and I'm going to point and leaving white space between these two petals because this one is a bit damp. So if I touch it with my brush, it's going to bloom and blossom into that petal. Point, press, point, press like this. Not pretty. I'm rinsing my brush so that I can go in and just soften that a little, like so. Okay, 
Isn't that beautiful? See the different values and how they make such a difference in your flowers. This one, I could probably go in and darken this up a little bit, which we can do in a minute here. Let's go ahead and paint this last petal. I'm going to use that same value. Loading my brush and again, leaving a little bit of white space if your petal is wet. Point, start putting more and more pressure. There we go. Point, more and more pressure. I'm going to just go around this petal like that. Maybe use the side of my brush, something like that. I'm going to soften up this line so I rinse my brush. I pat it on my paper towel and I'm going to push and pull. All right. There we go. And I think that's quite quite pretty and a lot of interest. This one, can you tell it looks a little bit flatter because most of the values are very similar. So we want to go in and add in some different values. I really liked how these in the back were dark, so I'm going to darken this one up. I'll go in, I grab for the darker value, more paint versus water. And let's go in and we can put a glaze over this. So a second glaze. Remember, we can always darken. We can't lighten necessarily. Point, press, point, press, like that. Not pretty. There we go, yeah, I like that a lot better. So rinsing my brush, drying it off a bit, and then maybe just softening some of these little edges is fine like that. There we go. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I think I'm also going to go in and just darken the, the bottom, the base of this petal. So what I'll do is grab some of my dark value Quinn Magenta. Just kind of go in here like that. Now this was still wet, surprisingly. And then dry, cleaning, drying my brush off so it's just damp. And go in again with that push and pull to kind of dampen the base of that. Okay, might do it a little bit here. And now we didn't go into this while these were wet. That's okay. Let's go ahead and pick up our green. Point, press. That's all right. I really like working the wet and wet, but it's okay. And then carrying these down. Now I'm gonna go into these mixing for a darker shade of my branch, I'm going to mix a little bit of the green and some of my Quinn Magenta. Look at that beautiful color. It's a brown, but it has those that beautiful shading of the magenta. And then we're going to just tap in here. Okay, like that. Maybe do these. Oh, so pretty. Maybe we can go back into that. There we go, I like that. Get a little bit more of that color. So I went into the magenta and mixed it with some of that green. And it really makes a beautiful shade of brown that has that touch of magenta in it. There we go. Oh, that's really pretty.
maybe create these little pieces coming out like that. And then while this is still wet, I'm going to go in and create that little bud. I'm going to use somewhat of a light color first. You can always darken it. And use the side of my brush like that, okay? And basically, I'm just leaving that. I might touch in a tiny bit with some of that beautiful brown we created from the green and the magenta. Just like that. I think that's really pretty. And there we go. I want to say I'm done. You can always add in some more detail. I, again, I'm, I'm not a detail person, so I don't get in there and do that. You could add in another little bud here. Let's do that. I'm going to use that brown that we made with the green and magenta. And let's just, there we go. And put a little bud at the end of that. I'm gonna use kind of the side of my brush point, press, and then let that blend. Okay, there we go. And just leave that like it is. Might touch in that just a tiny bit with my purple. There we go. Maybe use the tip of my brush with that brown just to Kind of add some interest to this branch. There we go. And I think I like that. I like that a lot. There you go. I hope this was uh, easy enough for you to follow. I, again, I will put this in uh, as a kit and you'll get these little brush strokes and the colors how we use the dark and light values. We use that a lot in this one. So we had the darker values in here and those created a lot of interest. And I actually, I think I liked this Grumbacher paper. It was pretty good. It's very textured. It almost reminds me of a rough, uh, which there's cold press and there's rough. They're, they're quite similar. So you will get this. I will label all the colors and the brush strokes, remembering to use, hold the back of your brush to get some of these more squiggly organic lines. And then this was using the side of your brush and wet and wet. And I will right now sign this and put on here Magnolia. tutorial. I will list all these brushes for you and date it. And I will go ahead and get this listed. This, this is a very interesting, by the way, size of paper. I've never quite had this before. Uh, it's eight by eight. Um, I can list this paper. It's not one I typically use. I just kind of started going through my paper and found this. Um, and so I went ahead and used it, and I actually quite like it. Um, okay, if you haven't grabbed my free ebook, go ahead and email me for that, and I will get that to you. It is a good reference for a lot of these brush strokes. And I will also list this number six, Princeton. This is the Heritage Series. And I will list the little uh, pencil that I use that I really, really love these, the Blackwing pencils. All right, everybody, happy painting, and thanks so much for being here with me.